Now, uh, one of the highlights of our week here in Sheffield, here in the Winter Gardens, we get to meet all of our old friends. They've become actually like family <laughs> all of these years. And today is Disability Day when we get to meet all of our friends who love this sport and they have varying degrees of ability and aptitudes within the game. Now, I've heard it said that laughter is the best therapy, but who knew? It's scientifically proven now that snooker has those qualities too. The new guide came about as a result of a partnership between WPBSA and Sport for Confidence. They chose each other to work together as a result of natural synergies between them in order to promote physical activity amongst disabled people. The new guide basically says anybody can play snooker. By its nature, snooker is a very adaptable sport with a range of accommodations that can be made to make sure the game is accessible for everyone. There are multiple benefits from playing snooker, be it from fine motor skills to the social elements of the game, and there are also physical benefits to playing the sport as well. It's going to enable us to work with a, a much wider audience. Um, so for clubs, I think they'll be looking to the guide to actually um, work a lot more in the community and, and bring a lot, lot more groups into the club. You know, on an international stage, I think our national federations around the world can, can look at this guide and think, well, can we use it to access some funding? because um, there's real proof there of the, the contribution snooker can make to, to people's health. Um, I think the coaches actually working with new groups, um, realising it, it doesn't have to be one-to-one, -one, it doesn't have to be junior snooker coaching necessarily, it can be community coaching. So I think there's just a whole host of opportunity out there now for our sport using this guide. We've always said that snooker is one of the very few sports that actually has no barriers for anybody and it's something that as a sport we're taking baby steps to, to gradually shout that little bit more from the rooftops about the inclusivity that, that is there available for people to come and play snooker. It helps people with their fine motor skills, with their speech, just with having a great time with their friends, sharing those experiences. I've attended many WDBS events you know, in the last year or two and thrilled to see the smiles on everyone's faces. They're all having a great time. And of course, you know, it doesn't matter who you are, everyone likes to have that little competitive edge as well. And it's great when you see them shake hands at the end of a match, one of them's won, but they all will feel like winners and they all have great times. And again, it's a step in the right direction for snooker, inclusivity for everybody. Liz, we're going to start with you. Could you just tell us a little bit about your involvement with snooker and with the therapeutic guide? Um, well, I've been an occupational therapist now for the last 20 odd years and uh, most of my career I've worked in the NHS. The last three years I've worked for an organisation called Sport for Confidence um, and last year we became a system partner with Sport England. At Sport for Confidence we use sport and physical activity therapeutically using the occupational therapy skills in a slightly different setting to what a traditional health setting would be. Um, we use, in our delivery centres in Essex, we do tend to use snooker and, uh, and so it was natural for us to form a partnership with snooker governing bodies. They were aware of previous guides that we'd written and we started having conversations around the therapeutic benefits of snooker and whether we could create a guide similar. And so, of course, it kind of ticked all of, all of our boxes because um, some of the work that we're doing with Sport England is all around linking the health and sports sector and uh, joining forces. Um, often we're working towards the same goals and it's about how we can utilise different sports such as snooker, um, to gain various different health and social benefits. Yeah, Andy, we'll bring you in. Can you just tell us a little bit about your story and your background? Yes, yeah, so, so I'm an occupational therapist, uh, like Liz at Sport for Confidence. Um, uh, I also uh, live with cerebral palsy and I, I very much uh, find sport and physical activity beneficial for my health, but it's not always found it accessible and to know that it's, it can be accessible and the, the, the efforts made by certain organisations to do so. And Liz, yeah. what evidence is there to suggest that it is beneficial for both physical and mental wellbeing? Well, if you think about um, just going to a snooker hall, um, you can, without even thinking about it, you can 
gain 10,000 steps easily. We had a student that wore a pedometer and gained 20,000 steps. Didn't even think about it. There's more and more evidence now to suggest that moderate, low uh, intensity physical activity is hugely benefit beneficial to our health, our physical health, cardiovascular health. And so just that alone is good. But there's huge social, you know, other benefits as well, such as social benefits. Um, and all sorts of different things, yes, aren't yeah, there? Yeah, quite, yes. And Andy, how proud does it make you feel to see that this is now so accessible and so many people are getting involved and just talking about it? Oh, yes, quite. I would before coming to the, I was in the, in the winter gardens and to see um, people living with disabilities, uh, uh, playing the sports and members of the public so make, seeing that as well and how visible it's becoming. Uh, and the the enthusiasm to make it more visible and for disability sport to become so. Yeah, thank, thank you, you both very much for all the hard work you're doing. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Abby Davis asking the questions there. And Nigel Moore, who is the chairman of World Disability Snooker, is with us. Lovely to have you with us and lovely to have all of your friends and colleagues here as well, Nigel. It's always a lovely day here. Yes. And the therapeutic benefits of snooker, 20,000 steps, just like that. Who yep. knew? When did you first realise the, the potential health benefits could be rolled out on a really grand scale? Yeah, well, I mean, I've been the chairman since 2015 um, when we've been running events with people for people with disabilities. And it's about inclusion and getting people to the events but what you do see is how innovative people with disabilities are to be able to play the sport but also how much mobility um, they gain through playing and, and moving around the table and there's yeah. it is very good exercise no uh, well, I, I, I mean I, the biggest thing yeah. for me is the social aspect for me being able to yeah. go there see their friends every day have interaction yes everybody loves the sport to go there and see each other every day it's a massive thing that isn't it it is I mean it's because there's two different things really one is developing players yeah. so they can play to the highest standard that they can achieve but the other is just getting people out of the house yeah getting in that social interaction as you say and uh, and it's definitely that I mean we've got some people who have made lifelong friends through playing on, in our events and the two prongs of that John you make a very good point one is the social yeah. um, fun aspect of it and the health benefits but obviously what would you say to those who really fancy a go at this they haven't had a chance to do so and the access I guess is all important yeah I mean when we run our events they run over a weekend and on the Friday we always have an open day for any people with any disability whether they've picked up a queue before or not to come and have a go we have coaches there that will help them that will you know introduce them to the sport all of which is really important um, and we get very good attendance we get schools we get um, all sorts of different people that come out to the events on a Friday just to give it a go I was gonna say now any age limits no nope. Not, not no, and, and there's there's no ability issue either because we cater for all the ab abilities uh, you know around the snooker table. So people who can't pot a ball, yeah. it would still be welcome. Um, and as I say, at the top end, we want to develop the players. And in an ideal world, we'd like to get a player with disabilities um, on the on the tour. You know, the, uh, making it a success of snooker as a career. But the inclusion and the points we've made about social and the exercise is really important as well. And the, the competitive side, are they, is, is, there real, is, there, is there an edge to some of these games? Oh, are, yes. they, are they disappointed <laughs> yeah. when they lose and oh, all that yes. sort of stuff? Yeah? Oh, yeah, we've got some very good players, actually, and they get very competitive right. with each other playing within their group. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, some of them get very, very cross when they lose. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you make a very good point in terms of, of bringing one of the players through from your tour and actually putting them onto the main tour yes. here. It's a realistic ambition because you say there's really not a great deal holding many of these players back. Yeah. How, how, what is the time scale that you might think about trying to achieve that within Nigel? Well it does come to, uh, come together largely with the players that we've got you know in terms of their skill sets to whether they can achieve it but we've had players uh, you know part of the aspiration is to get players with disabilities playing in ordinary events mm. not just disability events and we've certainly achieved that a lot of our players have played in World Snooker Federation events they've played in um, English partnership events you know in, in, mm. in, in uh, able-bodied snooker if I can call it that um, and but that we haven't yet got someone who's got that ability that's going to take them to the next level. But our aspiration is to find someone. Mm -hmm. okay. And the biggest problem we have actually is engaging with the, with the wider public to get people with disabilities to take up the sport. Yeah. Right. It's very difficult actually to find people with disabilities to, to come. Right. So we publicise it very widely, mm -hmm. but we want more people to come, especially to the open day to give it Maybe a go. Maybe that person's out there right now yeah. watching. So Absolutely. get in touch. Yeah. Uh, Nigel, thank you so much. And we will look forward to meeting some more of your members on the table here in the Winter Gardens today. Thanks thank for dropping you. by. Cheers. Thank you. OK.